Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it is an uh, interesting day, to say the least. Um, I'm just rehashing a little bit in my mind um, about where we are as Cowboy fans, okay? Um, we get told that we stink, that we're delusional, that we don't have a clue as to anything. You know, I like to think I, I am a very positive person. I always try and look for the positive side of everything. And... Um, Yesterday, doing the Dan Salio show uh, with, of course, Philly 500, where basically I'm, I'm meant to be the punching bag. It's okay. It's all right. And I know the Eagle fans enjoy it. You know, like I said, I'm going to lie and wait. And when the Eagles lose, I'll be jumping, you know, down their throat. I, I, I'll be jumping down. I can't wait because we know the Cowboys and the Eagles, I think, have split games. Or, excuse me, the Eagles last swept the Cowboys, I believe, 2011. So we, we almost can guarantee that there's going to be at least one victory there. Be that as it may, um, I can admit things like the Eagles have a great offensive line, that the tush push was incredible. But I can also be realistic and say that I'm not sure Jalen Hurts is everything that um, the Eagle fans believe that they are. And they literally think that everything, everything in the world that they have is always better than the Cowboys. And this is a case in point where I realized Philly 500, it's like, okay, I'm a homer. He's an even bigger homer than I am. I mean, I, I'm, I'm literally aghast at this one. So let me take us back to yesterday for a little bit here because this was Philly 500 talking about, you know, or the question was, who has a better back end? Okay, better back end. Malik Hooker and uh, J. Ron Curse are mm -hmm. safeties, okay? Okay, but you also and your have, corners uh, are Brandon Dix. Yeah, two all pros that have basically led the NFL in interceptions. Okay, this is the Eagle court. This is the Eagle uh, back end. You're going to have Avante Maddox, mm -hmm. Reed Blankenship. As of now, May 29th, mm -hmm. Bradbury or Quinion Mitchell, a rookie. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have 33-year-old Slay on the other side. Who's got the better back end secondary? We're done. We're done. We're done. Plus, we're listen, done. you got Diggs coming back from a torn ACL, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. You're coming back from a torn ACL, mm -mm -mm -mm. so you're never, you're never 100. You know what? That, that guy on one leg is better than some of the guys you're going to yeah, be putting out there. Yeah, I don't think there. so, buddy. I don't think so. Okay. I'll, I'll take, I'll take the Eagles. I'll take the youth. I know that it's going to take them time to transition, but by the end of the year, I like the Eagles to take their secondary way, way before I would take the Dallas Cowboys. Secondary. Aren't you the same guy by that said? By the end said, of the year, hey, wait, wait, that's what I would. Aren't you the same guy that said that your defense was going to be Dallas, unstoppable? My, my, my that book, you won't Dallas be able to run secondary. against them or do anything with Jordan Davis I can't hear and you. what? And oh, let's oh, yeah, see. What? See, I, I see why I'm here. I, I, this is. I know. I agree let, with you. Let, I think you have a better second. Let, let's I don't beat up on Mark Holmes on an Eagle channel and stuff. Let's give him some raw meat and everything. I, yeah. So, am I the crazy one here? Because here's where it's interesting here, okay? Because um, I was going through this morning, and, uh, you know, the boys at Pro Football Focus is did a rating of the top 10 secondary groups, right? So at number 10, oh, wrong one, sorry guys. It's probably better, you don't see me. At number 10, Cincinnati, Cam Taylor Britt, Mike Hamilton. At number nine, Christian Benford and Razul Douglas, Bills. Number eight, the New Orleans Saints, Paulson Albu and Atante Taylor. Number seven, Tariq Stevenson and Jalen Johnson. 
And number six, Brandon Stevens, Marlon Humphrey. Number five, San Francisco, Chavez Wards and uh, DeMontreur Lore, Lenore. Number four, Seattle. Okay. All right, so wait, 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 wait. So they must have the Eagles number one and the Cowboys second or third, right? Number three. Okay. Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, Jets. So that's got to be Eagles and Cowboys, right? Number two, the Cleveland Browns. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Number one, Diggs and Bland. Wow. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that the guys at Pro Football Focus have the Dallas Cowboys as the number two cornerback tantum in the NFL? The Eagles, who may be starting two rookies, aren't even in the top ten. But somehow, Philly 500 says they're going to be better. Okay. Tell me again about how delusional Cowboy fans are. Seriously? But it's all good. It's all good because the nice thing about the Internet is the Internet never forgets. It doesn't. Now, the Cowboys, of course, are knee-deep in uh, OTAs and um, contracts. Now, we're hearing, of course, that the Cowboys um, are at the precipice of beginning C.D. Lamb's contract. We know part of the holdup is Justin Jefferson. Um, interesting take on Pat McAfee's show was uh, with Mike Farello that the Cowboys are so stupid that they should have started with Micah Parsons. Now, mind you. Um, it would have been nice for the Cowboys to have gotten all these done and out of the way to save some money and so on. But the reality is, is this, is the Dallas Cowboys will be getting, um, come June 1st, $9.5 million on their cap, which will take them to $14 million, which is by far the highest amount of cash they've actually had this offseason. Getting C.D. Lamb's deal done will actually free up probably about 8 to $10 million in cap space, which would actually push the Cowboys $22 million into the black, in which case it would behoove them to go ahead and get Micah Parsons or Dak Prescott's deals done because then you have a little more cash uh, to work with on Micah Parsons, actually with Dax, sorry, depending on how they look at it. I still believe that the Cowboys look at it and say, we're going to take that $55 million hit this year because we can afford it. We can go ahead and get Micah Parsons done, and we can make our cap numbers better going forward if they go ahead and do that deal this year at all. Now, of course, Jerry Jones loves to have the talk, um, the conversation that has built the Cowboys, you know, be that they are the drama queens that they are, as the number one franchise without winning anything in 30 years. And Mike Farella goes on to talk about how cheap Jerry Jones is. Well, in reality, most rich people are because rich people don't give their money away, which is why they're rich. Let's go to that clip because I find that kind of interesting as well. Oops. When you look on the rest of this from here until, I guess, let's say the season, no, not even season, training camp, what's one thing that could possibly happen that we actually care about that makes some news that actually gets someone to, uh, gets a GM to say, come out of his uh, vacation home and make a call or something? Yeah, look, I'm not aware of anything right now. I'm sure there's something. When you're plugged into everything that's happening, there isn't one thing that stands out. There isn't some major trade that I think so can no happen, news. which means a major trade will happen tomorrow. There isn't a looming contract problem. I mean, you've got guys who are staying away from OTAs, but those things tend to work out. The one hot spot where I feel like they just don't know how to get themselves out of the corner they've painted themselves into is the Cowboys. They've got the issue with Dak Prescott twice now. They've got the issue currently with C.D. Lamb, 
And I don't think Micah Parsons is walking through the door until he gets his contract. And I don't know how they're going to work these things out. I think Micah should be the top priority, frankly. He's the future. He's one of the best defensive players we've seen in a very long time. But this, how the Cowboys are actually going to field a competitive team when they've handcuffed themselves over these three young players and they can't get out of this mess they made dating back to when they first had Dak Prescott's contract to renegotiate, I think that's what's amazing to me. I don't know why they have any real expectations. They're not better than they were last year. If anything, they're worse. And the Eagles, if they get their act together, if the Cowboys are going to have together. a rough year. And it's all because they're stuck in this mud with Prescott, Lamb, and Parsons. And it's definitely a proving year for Big Mike, right? I mean, this is... Yes. Yeah, right? So he's still... Last year of his contract. Yeah. Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, for as rich as he is, he's cheap. And he doesn't like to pay people to not work for him. He didn't fire McCarthy primarily because he would have had to pay him to not work in 2024. So play out the year. And I think Belichick, your guy, Belichick may be the ace in the hole next year if it doesn't work out with McCarthy. He might enjoy media too much to go back to coaching. I, I mean, there's a chance. <laughs> he's, uh, the shit that he's lined up for this fall should be pretty epic. Awesome. Yeah. Like what Bill is going to do this fall, I think should be pretty epic. For a guy whose press conferences were <laughs> must watch for him saying nothing, I think there's about to be a lot of football knowledge that's got about to get spilled. Does that heighten the interest from teams for Bill Belichick? I would assume yes. You know, that, that would certainly be the yes. But people have tied him to Dallas literally since from jump. the moment. Why is just because Jerry and Bill could coexist? Why, why do you why is that the case? And what are some other situations you think that are maybe looming for old Bill Belichick if he gets back into the game of head coach? If you look back at the press conferences from the times the Cowboys and the Patriots have played each other in recent years, and they don't play very often. Every time Belichick glowing about Jerry and Stephen Jones and the work they do in Dallas, the team they've put together. And Jerry, after he issued the statement that Mike McCarthy isn't getting fired, at some point after that, he talked about how he could employ Bill Belichick. Now, some would say when it's time to actually go do it, Bill may not like the way Jerry does things. But, but I think they could get together because I think that's the one place where Bill Belichick... You notice... Do you notice how much... We hear of, I think, 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 I think. This is, of course, waiting for training camp. This is silly season. This is, there is no news out there. You know, we started out this whole process here saying, you know, there's no trades on the horizon. There's no this, that, or the other. Um, but, you know, and then I, this is where you automatically go to the Cowboys. You know, I think they're making a mistake. They're stuck in the mud. They're not better than they were last year. Uh, if the Eagles get themselves together, it could be a rough road. Jerry Jones is cheap. I think they should pay Michael Parsons. Um, Mind you, you know, this is where it's interesting is Micah Parsons returning to OTAs. He wasn't not there because of contract dispute. He was there because he was an ambassador for the NFL in uh, Japan, as well as doing some personal training work that he's approved with the Cowboys and returns this week. He understands that he has the fifth year option and everything else and so on. And Micah Parsons will be there. And so you're saying that a quarterback who technically will be a free agent at the end of this year and can walk, that a wide receiver who is holding out at the moment and waiting to get paid like Justin Jefferson, who is on his fifth-year option, that you should bypass both of those guys and deal with a Micah Parsons. Am I correct on that? Okay, let's listen a little more. I wouldn't feel compelled to take over. Let Jerry and Steven and the structure they have in place put the team together. You know, you don't need to shop for the groceries to cook the meal if you have a fully stocked kitchen. And the Cowboys have plenty of talent if they can figure out how to keep them around. But I think what he's doing with you this year, what he's been doing so, with Peyton. So wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, well, see, see, he's contradicting himself even there. He just said the Cowboys aren't better than they were last year. 
and they're about to have a rough road. Then you turn around and say, you don't need to stock the, the, the you, know, you don't need to go grocery shopping because the team is stocked if you can keep the talent. Literally within two minutes, he's contradicted himself. You have to wonder, is he high? This year is genius because one of the big challenges for Bill Belichick, I believe, is to get a fan base sufficiently excited about 72-year-old Bill Belichick walking through the door in 2025 because I don't think there were many fan bases clamoring for him there after it went sideways in New England. But if he does none. more stuff with you like what he did during the draft and when he's on Peyton's show on Monday nights, I mean, that's a way for him to maybe light the fuse to get a fan base saying, we want that guy next year. And ultimately, it's a business about getting people to show up for the games and watch your games and feel good about the team. You get a fan base behind or multiple fan bases behind Bill Belichick, he'll have a job next year. He was awesome at the Draft Spectacular. Unbelievable. Yeah. The night before the Draft Spectacular at our little production dinner, we'll call it, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the whole lead up to it, awesome. He was, and obviously the stories and the amount of respect that every person in football has for him. You just walk by people that are legends in football, and they're the ones that are going out going, Mr. <coughs> Belichick, Mr. Coach Belichick, Coach, like trying to tell the stories. It is it's fascinating because he's how many games away? I believe he's 14 or 15 wins away from setting the record. Being the all-time winning coach, it's like as competitive as he is, as much of a historian of the game that he is, I mean, that's obviously just sitting there lingering at all times. I'll be all right, we'll leave it right there. So which is it? Which is it? There, there's so much bullshit around when it comes to the Cowboys. We have Vegas having the Cowboys favored by 14 games, 14 of their 17 games. Um, and I, and I, trust me, I understand, of course, Vegas's thing is to try and get people to gamble on both sides of it. And um, so they manipulate what they actually think is going to happen in things. However, you're still favored in 14 games. You got to give up points every single game. Interesting to say the least. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who's actually here getting ready to do some work on a house. And as always, you know I appreciate you guys. And be sure to uh, check us out tomorrow night. Uh, we'll be doing our live stream probably from here um, in Pennsylvania. And um, we'll keep you up to speed with all there is with the Cowboys. And they're about to get paid. I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we here.